Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Boris TV tutorial. And you know, for me, it's very important when I do tutorials, especially the ones where I'm using effects from, in this case, BCC8 for Adobe's After Effects, it's important for me to give you real world situations where you can use these effects. And you know what? I have the perfect real world situation for this fantastic new effect inside of BCC8. And the effect I'm talking about is Film Glow. And I'm actually working on a bunch of promos for The Lion King coming in 3D. Uh, and I actually have to take the English spot and I'm making it French. And I have to basically mimic all of the uh, characteristics of the English uh, text treatment in French. And one of the parameters that they had done was they had done a glow effect that had gleamed across the text. And you know what? There was no better effect for me to use in that situation than film glow. And I want to show you how simple it is to create a very cool gleam moving across text. And we're going to create some text inside of BCC's extruded text. And we're going to top it off by putting the icing on the cake by adding film glow to that. I'm going to show you how simple this effect is to create right now. So as always, the first thing we need to do is to command tab into Adobe's After Effects. And let's create a new composition. I'm just going to make it 1280 by 720 and we'll make it 2398 frames per second. I'll just make the duration 10 seconds long. And I'm simply going to say OK. And the first thing that I need to do my extruded text, because that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the extruded text and then we're going to add film glow on top of it, is I'm going to press Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y on Windows. And I'm going to create a new solid. Doesn't really matter the color. I'm going to now navigate up to Effect. I'm going to come down to BCC8's 3D Objects, and I'm going to select Extruded Text. I'm going to type in In Theaters. Now remember, I'm going to type Theaters R-E-S because I am in Toronto, Canada, and in Canada, we still do use the Queen's English. And I'm going to say on September 16th, just like that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the size of In Theaters here just so that it lines up. And we'll just make that, let's just say 115. That's pretty close. And what we can even do here is just get in and just adjust the spacing between our 16th, just like that. I think that's pretty good. And let's just make sure that we adjust the letting a little bit here. And we'll just stick it at 32 and I'll say apply. You'll see now that because I have caps lock on, I'm just gonna deselect caps lock and this is looking okay. What we need to do now is obviously just, you know, fix this up a little bit so that it looks a little bit better because it's looking a little bit chunky inside of my composition window. So the first thing I'm going to do is just zoom in on my text. And what I normally like to start out by doing, I'm just going to hit the space bar here, is I like to position my text just so that I can see all of it in the frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is just turn on my title safe here. Let me just zoom back here. And what I'm going to do is navigate over here to my transformations and I'm going to adjust the master scale. Let's just put it down at about 65% and see if that's good enough. That's actually perfect for the end. And now you can see that we're going to need a little bit of space in between our characters. So we'll get in and adjust that in just a second. So maybe we'll just make this a little bit smaller. We'll make it about 55. Okay, I think that's going to be perfect. What I'm going to do is just come back up to my edit text window and let's just adjust the tracking here just a little bit to give some space in between the letters. That's perfect. Okay, now I'm just going to zoom in because what I wanted to show you first is I'm just going to come over here to the S. We want to make sure that our S is as smooth as it can possibly be. So what I normally like to do is come into render and you can see the polygon count is set to 12. So I'm just going to double that. I'm going to set it to 24. And it's just going to give our edges here just a little bit more of a smooth look to them. I'm just going to zoom back here. Now the next thing I want to do is set the color of this text. So I'm going to navigate down here. And we're going to come right down here to our material and we're going to need to create two materials because what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to have one material for the face and one for the sides. So let's do this first. Let's create a new solid and I'm just going to make it sort of that orange color that I was working with before and maybe even a little bit more orange. I think we'll just drag it down like that. That's not too bad. I'll say OK. And what I'm going to do is turn that off. I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to press Command, Shift, and Y, Control, Shift, and Y for all you Windows users. And we're going to make this a little bit darker for our edge, just about like that. OK, and I'm going to say New. And what we can do is we can call this Face, and we can call this Side. What we need to do now is make sure that we tell the effect that we're going to want to have a different material for the side and a different material for the face. Very simple to do. I'm going to come up to material count and we're going to come here to two front and back and bevel and side. 
Once I select that, you're going to see that I now have the option to set the front and back material and the bevel and side material. So let's do that. I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to tell it that I want the front texture file to be the face. You'll see that the color immediately updates. What I'm going to do now is just twirl that back up. I'm going to come down to bevel and side, and we're simply going to choose the side just like that. And you'll see now that if I zoom in, my sides are slightly darker than my face. And what I can even do here is we'll just get in and we'll just make this even a little bit darker. Just like that. Just so it stands out a little bit more. We'll say OK. Now what I need to make sure of is that I just come back in here and we'll just update this. I'm going to turn it off and then we'll turn it back on again to side. There we go. Much nicer. You can see that the sides are now darker than the faces. Okay, so our text is pretty good. What I'm going to do just to top it off is I'm going to have a very slight move on it. So what I'm going to do is come back down to transformation and we're going to drop that down and we're going to set a position keyframe right here at the top and I'm going to jump down to the end and let's just set our position to be minus one, just like that, just so it's a very slow move in. And I like this because the built-in light, as you can see, is positioned right over here. And you can see I can move it like that. But I like it just sort of revealing the left side of the text a little bit brighter than the right side. And you can see now as I click through, our text is looking very nice. Nice and in 3D. Now the reason I did the text in 3D is because, like I said, I need to match exactly what the English version of that spot did. So now I need to add a little bit of icing on the cake, and we're going to do that using Film Glow. Now the reason I'm going to use Film Glow is that what it basically does is that it simulates light being blasted at this text, and the text actually giving off a bloom effect, and it's a very, very nice effect, a very common effect that you see in film these days. And it can be found right over here in film style. Again, I want to point out BCC8, all of our categories have changed to represent more what the effects do as opposed to things like OpenGL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down film style and you can see film glow is located right here. What I'm going to do is most people might take this and they would drag it right over here onto the blue solid. And you can do that. What I'm going to do is just twirl up BCC extruded text. I'm going to take film glow, drag it right over here, drop it in there. And you can see, yes, you can work that way. I'm not going to work that way though. I'm just going to undo what I just did. And I'm going to navigate up to layer and I'm going to say new adjustment layer. And I'm going to apply the glow to the adjustment layer. And you're going to see why in just a second. What we're going to do is we're going to get this glow to look the way that we want. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to animate this very easily. Now, the first thing I do need to point out, much like many of the effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete 8, we have access to the compare feature. So if I want to drop down compare, I can simply turn compare on and I can see what the before and what the after is. But I like the way that that light is blasting and making this bloom out a little bit. So I'm just going to turn compare off. And what we're going to do is I don't want this to be too big of a bloom. I want it to be more intense than anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring down the radius a little bit. And you'll see that as I do that, I'm just going to bring it right back out here again. We do have access to do this with the on-screen widgets. I can just grab the widget. You can see there's glow radius and just bring it down. So what it is, is it's more of an intense glow that blooms a little bit just like that. Very nice. You can see I can even get in and I can adjust the intensity to make it even brighter, but it's still not getting out too much from the edge of the text. So that's looking very nice. You're going to see that we can get in and we have a lot of options that we can adjust inside of the film glow effect, but you don't really need to do too much to get this to look very nice. And of course, I should point out, much like most of the effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete 8, you do have access to some presets to get you started. So you can hop in, choose any one of those presets to get going and to try to push yourself in the right direction. But I'm happy with the way that this looks. It's a very bloomed out look. But what I want to have happen is I want to have it look as though the light has been turned onto the text and that this glow is moving right across it. Because again, I have to mimic what the US version and the English version of the spot does. That's the reason that I applied it to the adjustment layer because what I can do now is simply come in, I can take my mask, I can mask off the part of the image that I wanna do. We wanna make sure that we're using the actual mask tool here, not the shape tool, just like this. There we go, just like that. And what I can do is even feather this mask. Let's just put it pretty high because I wanna have it not too subtle, just like that, just a very slight gleam across. Maybe that's a bit too much. Let's do about 120 much nicer. And what we're going to do is with the mask selected, I'm just going to make sure that I have the selection tool selected. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say mask shape and path 
And let's just rotate this mask a little bit just so that the gleam looks like it's happening on an angle. Now all we have to do is simply take our mask. We're going to move it out of the frame like such. I'm going to add a keyframe for the mask. We'll just hit M. Then what I'm going to do is come down, add a keyframe. And I don't want this gleam to take very long. I only want it to be about four seconds long. So I'm just going to punch in four seconds. And at that point, we're going to want to have this mask move right across to gleam just like that. Now I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, well, hold on a second. I know that under lights, what I could have done was I could have used a light sweep. And you know what, that's true. The only thing with the light sweep that you need to keep in mind is the light sweep is contained inside of the text. Whereas with this effect, we want the glow to be happening outside of the text as well. And you can see now that what I'm gonna do is give this about a second and a half to establish itself. And then we're going to have the glow start to move across. What I'm going to do is just preview this just like that. And you'll see that the end result has been created not using any footage, just using the power of Boris Continuum Complete's extruded text and the new fantastic film glow. And there we go. So I'm just going to hit the space bar to play this. And you can see there's our text moving. And there is our fantastic film glow moving across the text. Very quick and very simple. And you got to remember, in most cases, you're only going to think of a glow effect to be taken and put on top of moving footage. But you know what? Using it in a situation like this creates a very cool and very realistic looking glow as if a light has been turned and shone right across the text from one side to the other. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, please send them to support at borisfx.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.